Hey, I'm Shamini. I'm the owner of the Happy Film Company. And the Happy Film Company, we photograph kids and families in Seattle. Um, three years ago, I posted a video about this lens. This is the 100 millimeter macro 2.8 L series Canon lens. Um, it's my most popular video ever. And you guys asked me a bunch of questions. And I just took the time to write an entire blog post answering the questions. So click the link below and you can read about it. But specifically, I'm gonna tell you right now about why I shoot with the 100 millimeter instead of the 70 to 200, or imagine I'm holding an 85 millimeter. I don't even have it because I don't even shoot with it. All three of these lenses are amazing at portraits. They're amazing at portraits because they have a focal length that's inside the classic po portrait classic portrait length, which is 80 to 105. Essentially, if you're using a lens that has a focal length between 80 and 105, it means you're going to have that beautiful bokeh in the background. It means the background's blurry and everything's going to be crisp and clear. And it's long enough that the thing you're photographing, the, the face of a person, a family, will look very flattering. Usually like pretty realistic, not warped. Because um, when you get wider and wider, it starts to stretch and everyone kind of looks overweight compared to what they are. And if it, if it gets longer and longer, they're gonna get flat and squished. So these three lenses that we talked about, 85, 70 to 200, and 100 are all in this sweet spot, which means any one of them is gonna be awesome for taking portraits. You can take portraits at weddings, you can take portraits at uh, families, um, headshots, it doesn't matter. People ask a lot about, you know, is this lens okay for weddings or is this one, okay for portraits and you're like yeah like you you can use any lens you want in any situation it's just it's up to you to figure out how i have used both of these in all situations i've ever shot in and there are reasons why i would choose to bring one over the other but they all work you just have to get better at being a photographer and learning how to use your tools kind of like saying um could you dig a hole with a pitchfork could you dig a hole with a shovel? Could you dig a hole with a, a rake? Yeah, you can dig a hole with all of them. And I'm sure if you do it a lot, you'll get better and you'll learn which ones do the job best. So it's the same with lenses. I photograph families that have young kids. So if you're interested in that, that's an environment where it's fast paced, there's moving, there's lots of things coming in and out of focus different usually than a wedding. Like weddings, you're dealing with a lot of people standing there in a line looking nice and dressed up. A lot of people sitting and slowly mingling. Um, as a family portrait photographer, you're gonna be dealing, well, if you're like me, you're gonna be dealing with kids running and kids thrown up in the air and um, things that are very unpredictable. So the lenses that you choose for your type of photography are really important that it matches your type of photography. This one, the 100 millimeter, is the best one I've found in conjunction, is that the right word? Uh, or collaboration with um, the 35 millimeter. So most of the time my camera bag has a 100 millimeter and a 35 millimeter. And that does the job for me all the time. Because the 35 gives me the wide shots of the this, this scene that we're in, uh, group shots of the family. I'll do another video about that one. This one is for the beautiful portraits, for beautiful video clips. Um, because it has this beautiful bokeh, all the photos that it takes are really crisp and really smooth at the same time. Um, it's crisp because, you know what, actually, before I dive into details, I want to match what I'm saying along with my blog post so that you can actually follow along. So the first thing that's awesome about this is that it's designed to take photos close up. It's designed to be able to take photos of details. So whether that's a wedding ring close up or a little child's eyelashes or the wrinkles on grandpa's face, this lens will take those details and you will see them clearly. Um, to get those details, you have to be up close, right? So this lens, if I'm photographing my ring, it can take photos like right here within a foot. This big old boy, 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 this big boy, um, can't get this close. It'll just be blurry. And so I have to move like far, 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 far away before I can even take a photo that 
And by that point, it's not a detail. Now you have a photo of my hand. Um, so the 70 to 200 is awesome if you're taking photos from far away. If you want to have people in an intimate moment and you're spying on them, like a detective, it's great. Like a capturing something at an event. Um, but this is great when you want to be up close. Um, that's another reason I like that 35 because it also is a lens that gets super close. So as a family portrait photographer, I like lenses that let me get up super in people's faces. I want to be able to have my camera lens right here because it makes a kid giggle when you bring the camera up and you're like, how close can we get? And it makes the photos feel very intimate and personal when they're taken that close. Um, I mean, just because of the fact that you can tell when you look at a photo, you can tell it was taken up close and personal, which makes it feel that way. It has more emotion in it. Um, and one way to think about it is if your lens is bigger, you're going to need a bigger space to work in. So if I know that I'm taking photos in a tight space, I'm never going to bring that giant lens because it's going to be a bitch the whole time. I'm like trying to focus and I'm trying to like literally squeeze in my it's too big so something like the 100 is it's still a big lens but it's smaller than that one so i can take it into um these smaller situations like a tiny room or a newborn like if, if there's a newborn baby in a bedroom i only have like 10 feet to work with so i want lenses that can do this um one more point on that if you think about like focusing like your eyes and the camera lenses are the same it's the same physics happening here. Um, so when you put your nose, your finger up to your nose and you focus on it and you move it away, like you're, you're going to hit, you're going to find where is it blurry and where is it clear? And it's the same thing with the lens. You'll find when you're taking a photo of something, there'll be a range of how close you can get before it's blurry. This camera lens, the 100 millimeter lets you get things a lot closer. Okay, on that note, because of that feature, I can get more variety out of this lens. Um, when I bring these bigger lenses, this or the 85, I feel... Okay, let me step back. The 85 is more limiting for me. I'm stuck at 85. All my portraits feel like I'm taking it at a certain distance from people. Can't get closer. It's not letting me zoom. The 70 to 200 lets me zoom. So I can have variety, far, close... Um, that's helpful, but it's so big, it's, it's a bitch. This one gives me kind of the taste of the variety I can get because I can get in so close and I can also go out so far. The 85 is just kind of like stuck right here. Um, it can't go closer. Um, also because of the way it focuses, it's great for video. Um, it makes me feel like I'm looking at cinema or like film, like art, fine art film versus just quickly recording on a phone. Like it gives you this quality of depth um, where something in particular, like whatever it is you're focusing on is so clear and everything else is so, so blurry. And being able to have that and be able to focus in closely means that this can produce some of the most beautiful film footage, video footage I've ever seen. So if I'm going on a, on a, on a photo shoot, I do photos and videos for my clients. And I want to know that I'm going to be able to deliver for them a variety of stuff, close up, far away, videos, photos, um, details, and stuff that's wide, stuff that's blurry, stuff that's clear. Like I want a whole toolbox of stuff to play with. And I feel much more confident that I'll be able to deliver that if I have the 100. Um, what else has my gotta say on the blind pops? Okay, crispness. Of all the photos that I take, the, the crispest, sharpest, clearest, um, I think those are all the words, they come from the 100. The, all, the, all the lenses I shoot with are L series, which means they all have this, this red ring. They're like the top caliber quality of lenses. And amongst them, the 100 gives me the highest quality of all of them. Um, I did a little bit of research on why, because for years I've known this to be true, but I didn't really understand why. And according to some websites that teach you about physics, flat field characteristics is what we're talking about here. Um, 
when you get really nerdy and you look into the actual mechanics and the physics of like, how does a lens work? What is happening with the light? What angles are... What, what angles is the light coming in at? What angles are the glass positioned at? All that stuff affects what the lens specializes in. Now the macro lens is designed in a way that it, it can really take photos of things that are flat. And it's really good at that. And because of this, it means that, that the macro lenses take the sharpest images of all of the others. That's really all I can say on this. I have not dug any deeper. Um, in the blog post, I've included a link so that you can see where that information came from. But that answers why. Why it's so crisp. It's so great. Um, okay, another comment on that quality of the photo. Like when you see a photo and you know it's high quality, it's usually like bright, crisp, you can see all the details. It's as close to your human eye as possible. This 100 millimeter is a lot closer to that human eye than the 70 to 200, um, or the, even the, the, the 85. And that's because, actually I would take that back. I don't know about the 85, but with this one, this is like a long tunnel, like a long hallway. And, a, and the light has to travel all the way down this barrel to get to the camera, to get to what I see. By the time the light has traveled through here, it's gone down in quality because we're getting less of it. It's been filtered through many layers of glass and it means that it's gonna be really hard to take photos in the dark because there's already a lot of light not getting through even on a sunny day. When you start to shoot with, with shorter lenses, like the 100, I mean, it's significantly shorter. It's like half the size. Um, the 85, is a little bit shorter than that, I think. And then like I shoot with a 35, also a little bit shorter. These are all gonna be allowing more light in. The light doesn't have to travel as far. And it's essentially replicating more of what your eye is. Like your the light coming in your eye doesn't have to travel as far. Imagine if you're wearing like big long binoculars, like the world will feel a little bit darker. So less light means the photo's gonna be more grainy. It's not gonna be as crisp and beautiful. So even though the 70 to 200 takes beautiful photos, never going to be as crisp as these, the ones from the 100 because of the length. Okay. On that note, talking about darkness, when you're taking photos in the dark, um, there's only so many things you can do to work with it, right? You, you can turn your shutter speed down so that the camera lens is open longer. The camera is open, taking in light for a longer period of time. You can increase your ISO so that it's more sensitive. So the light that gets into the camera is more of its registering. Um, or you can open up your aperture so that the pupil of the camera, the, the opening is wider, more light comes in. Those are your options. When you're working with a big lens like this, it's 70 to 200, which means the lowest I can shoot at shutter speed wise is 200. When I'm shooting on a 100, I can open my shutter to one over 100. Do you know what I'm talking about here? This is shutter speed. It's the focal length versus the shutter speed rule. It's a photography rule. However long your lens is, whatever that focal length is, this is a 100, that is the lowest that I can have my shutter speed. The slowest, one over 100. So it's one 100th one of a second is how quickly that photo will take. If I go below that, the photo will start to get blurry. Side note, if you have your hand is really stable and you've trained yourself to take photos at a slower speed, this will be less relevant to you. But the general rule is that whatever the number is on this lens, this says 100, that is what it's going to say on the back of your camera when you look at what your shutter speed is. You can have it at that or you can have it higher. But if you have it lower, your photo is probably going to be blurry. Same thing here. You look at this, 70 to 200. The shutter speed should be at or above 200. If it goes lower, if you set it at 70, the photos are going to be blurry. This happens to me all the time on accident because I'll be at a shoot with this camera and it's dark and I crank with my hand to open up the shutter and like have it have more light come in and I'm like, oh, finally the photos are bright. But then I look at them and I'm like, damn it, I had it at 180 instead of at 200, just like a little bit under, and the photo's blurry. Um, 
this is all about the stabilization. It's when the camera takes the photo, is the lens and the camera, are the little movements in your hand going to make the camera blur, or the photo blur? Or is it gonna take it so fast that it doesn't matter if you're blurry? Make sense? So you can do a little bit more Googling on that concept if you want. But the reason I would like to take a 100 on my shoot is because I can drop my shutter speed all the way down to 100. If I take this one, I'm stuck at 200. And if it's dark, I don't wanna be stuck anywhere. I wanna feel like I have options. Um, so typically if I'm taking photos in a dark situation, an 85 would even be better or something like a 50 or a 35. Like the lower you can go in that number, that means you're gonna have more light. But I'm, I'm not bringing the 85 because most of the time I'm not in dark situations. And the 100 is, is giving me that variety and the crispness and the close-up detail that I can't get with the 85. So it doesn't win. Ha! Okay. Um, my final thing I want to share, and this is a little word of caution, is that when you're shooting with this lens, this lens is designed to pick up details. It sees everything. It's going to see every tiny little speck of dirt and hair and dust that's on there. And when you especially, actually, no, I won't say that yet. Um, when, you put, when you put the photos on your computer and the photos blown up huge, you will see all those little specks. It'll be less obvious if the photo is of something full of detail. It'll be more obvious if the photo has a lot of negative space. What I mean is if you take a photo of a family standing in front of a bunch of trees, you might not notice the dust spots because those little black dots will blend into the background of the trees. If you take a photo of a family in front of a big blue sky or a big cement wall, you will probably see those little dark spots because now there's contrast. What was behind them was light and now you'll see the little dark spots. So to avoid that, just make sure your lens is clean. Um, sh shooting with clean lenses is kind of like a photography 101, but sometimes when we're busy and we're running our business and we're running our life, we show up at a photo shoot and we're like, shit, I haven't cleaned my lenses, whatever. Like, and, and you let it go a little bit. At least I do. There's, there's a give and take on how OCD we're gonna be about it. But there's certain lenses where it's more important. The wide lenses, like the 35s and the 50s, I'm a little bit more lax about it. The lenses like the 100 I really, and the 70 to 200, I really make sure it's clean because I will see everything and I will spend too much time in Photoshop cleaning up those little dark spots the whole time wishing I'd just cleaned my damn lens. Um, so, side note, easiest things to have in your camera bag for cleaning, to have a little microfiber cloth and to have one of these is fun. Um, I don't actually know what this is specifically called. This is a lens pen. On one side you have the brush and on the other side you have like a little microfibery thing. And it can just be so easy to just quickly brush it off. And then I, like, I usually use my breath, just like just a little bit of moisture and then a little bit of rubbing. And um, honestly, sometimes I even use my shirt. I know it's not the best thing, but sometimes you're out in the field and you're like, damn it, I just got to make it happen. However, it's going to work. So yeah, um, I hope that answers a little bit more detail about why the 100 in particular. Um, please let me know if you have any other questions about this lens that I haven't answered um, or about my blog post or anything else you want to know. Um, again, my name is Shamini and I'm a photographer and a videographer in Seattle. My company's called the Happy Film Company, and we're out doing photo shoots with families outside, inside, all over the place. You can book a photo shoot through my website, and you can follow my blog if you want to see the photos that I'm releasing every week. Um, and subscribe to my newsletter if you want to find out when we're doing mini sessions, or if you want more video tips like this. Or go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel, and then I'll totally just make more videos for you. Okay. That's it for now. <laughs> See you later.